Rupert, how big is this Sahos five axis machine here from Asquith Butler? What's the capacity? Okay, so what we've got here is five meter by 1.5 meter bed uh, with just over a meter in height. That's some working envelope. Do you, get, do you get the full use of that? Yeah, we do. Uh, there's a number of options. We can either put one big job on there uh, and, and work on it all in on its entirety. Or what we tend to find more often at the moment is we've got lots of smaller jobs. We can uh, divide the bed up into areas and work on a job at this end while we're setting one up at the other. That's very interesting. Was, was that part of your decision maker? Was that why you, one of the reasons you bought this machine? Because it does give you that flexibility. Because most machines you might see like this are, are fully guarded the entire way round. So I suppose once the door's shut, you're isolated. Yeah, most definitely. The nature of our business, uh, we need to be able to respond to whatever the customer needs. And today, I don't know what that's going to be tomorrow. So giving us the flexibility to be able to work in that way is certainly uh, a factor. In, in why we chose this machine. And interestingly here, you've got a vac mat there, which, which is obviously for, for vacuuming parts down. You've got vices. So you're kind of a, a quite equipped on the bed for lots of different types of smaller parts and larger parts. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I mean, as well as the, um, the toolboard material that we're machining, we might be required, for instance, to send the toolboard next door, have a, have a pattern made and have a carbon composite um, component to come back. So we need a variety of ways of being able to hold these things on the bed. Uh, and is, is the board what you're machining on this machine in its entirety? The very, mu very fast majority of it is toolboard, yeah. Every once in a while we'll make a component and that needs to come back for have a couple of features uh, addressed on it. Uh, but the, 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 the main purpose of this machine is, is, to, is to cut pattern board. And do you cut it fast? Yeah, we do, we cut very fast. Uh, Initially, at least, the, the roughing operation, we can, we can, we can go at that quite hard. Um, you can what is fast in your eyes? Gosh, in terms of an action. You run at 24,000 RPM, because I know that's the spindle case. Sorry, the spindle speed, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be running almost flat out. And particularly when we get to very small diameter balls, when we're putting some very fine detail into components, we need a very small diameter ball. In order to get the surface speed out of the tool, we need that sort of spindle capacity. One of the things that you, you guys have said to me today as well is about the accuracy of the machine. That's been a, been a big plus for you as well, hasn't it? Yeah, and again, the sort of, the, the sort of clients that we, that we play with, uh, they demand that, that these levels of accuracy. So um, you know, we've, we've got a, a, a measuring system within the machine as well, so we can use the probe to verify the accuracy of the, of the, uh, of the part that we're making even before we remove it from the bed. And what are the types of parts that you're making here out of this model board, Rupert? Okay, so uh, I've, got a, I've got a medical customer who sends me um, resin impregnated coils. Uh, we machine diameters on those. It's really important for that particular client that the ID of this component is uh, concentric with the OD that we are asked to machine. So that then goes away and fits into his superconducting magnet system. Um, a lot of motorsport work, so it could be anything from a... Uh, you know, anything from an aerofoil type uh, surface to a wing mirror bracket to a, you know, a funny little bracket or you know, those sorts of things. Absolutely anything, if you can think of it, we can, we can design it and we can, we can make the pattern for it on this machine. A machine in board fast creates a lot of uh, dust in the machine, doesn't it? How do you go about getting rid of that and is, is it efficient? Yeah, well that's a big concern because just this, this dust that it produces, it produces a, an awful lot of the stuff particularly on a big piece of board, a big, a big pattern that we have to make. We need to get rid of that, protect the operator, uh, and we need to protect our machine as well from all this dust that's going to get into the, into the workings and the components of it. So we expect a, a big extraction system on this machine, uh, and if you look around the, the facility, I hope you'll see that actually it's taking the vast majority of the dust and dealing with it rather than just letting it float around in the air and settle on all the surfaces, including you and me. Yeah, but it's also quite neat the way it works as well because it blows the dust into the extractor as well, doesn't it, on this machine? That's right. There's a, there's a two-stage process. So we put a big vacuum extraction system on the back which, uh, which takes the airborne particles away. Um, we do know that some of the particles are going to be so heavy that if they settle on the bed, the extraction system is not going to be enough to, to, to uh, take them away for us. So we've set up a blower on this side of the system that, that keeps these particles airborne and actually directs them into the extraction duct. So that, that helps us to uh, achieve the sort of clearances that we're, that we're managing. Some of the parts you're, you're making, I've seen, there's, there's a need for five axis simultaneous machining, which you can do on this machine as well, can't you? Yeah, five axis machining, we come across from time to time. Uh, it's a very valuable part of, of what, what the Sahos will bring for us. Uh, and there's some components that we produce, there's just no other way of doing it. You, you need full five axis. 
with this machine being quite new to the company and yourself quite new to the company, it's different technology to what you've got, which includes the, the hide and hang control. That was quite new to you. How have you, how have you handled that transition from another control to this type? Sure, you're absolutely right. We had a bit of a learning curve. Um, Heidenheim was a new controller to our business, uh, and it's just been a case of actually making sure that we've got the right skills in place to get the very best out of that. The machine itself, five axis machine, you've got a big working envelope, as you said, five, five meters. What about the tooling on this? It's HSK 63, and how many tools can you get on the machine? Yep, HSK F63, um, fabulous tool holding system. The faster you spin your spindle, the, the tighter it gets. You, you get really good accuracy out of it, despite us having a very long Z axis on this machine. Uh, you, you, you tend to minimize the run out with that kind of holder. Um, we've got a 12 station uh, tool carousel, uh, and we find actually that it's enough for the vast majority of the parts we're putting through here. We just need a couple of roughers, and then we work our way down to, you know, depending on the complexity of the job to finer and finer uh, ball nose mills uh, just, for, just for picking out the very finer detail of what we're not trying to do. I'd, I'd finally like to just talk about the health and safety element when you've got a column machine like this moving backwards and forwards. Did you see that as, as risky in any way, shape or form? Is there any overrides? Well, it was very new to me. I'd never seen a machine like this before. Uh, and yes, I, initially I did have a concern. But when you start to understand the safety features that this machine's got, for instance, the yellow uh, areas on each side of the machine are also act as bumpers. So if you were to if you were to come into contact with those whilst the machine is in operation, it would stop. Um, and actually, it's uh, it's a very good machine to access, uh, and we we feel very comfortable. You can control the travel of the machine, so we can limit it just to the very far end of the machine whilst we're working on setting a job up here, for instance. So the safety element has all been very well thought about. We've talked about you cutting board and composites on this machine, but. Can it handle metal? Yes, we've cut metal on this machine before. Um, the reason the machine is here is largely to cut the pattern board, and that's what it's going to spend most of its life doing. But yeah, if, an, if a metal job comes up uh, and it's right for this machine, we'll put it on. John, three years this company has been founded for, correct? Yes, that's right, yeah. We, uh, we started the company from scratch three years ago, yeah. And there's been some, well, some development here. I mean, it's a huge business now, I believe. Yeah, so this year we're looking forward to our third full, uh, full year of business to turn over about eight and a half million pounds this year. Some achievement in three years. And some of these parts behind us here we see are, are, are basically what you do here at Lentis, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Yeah, we've got everything ranging from uh, torque transmission shafts, uh, bike frames on the moulded composite side, uh, other motorsport um, bodywork. Because on, the, on here, we, we, we automotive and motorsport, defence, medical, aerospace, marine, is there any sectors you don't get involved in? <laughs> uh, we try and uh, keep ourselves to those what we see as robust um, market sectors. Um, but yeah, it's fair, fairly varied. And are you innovators and designers as well as manufacturers? Yeah, so we can take everything from a build to print job through to um, concept, engineering, uh, do all the design for manufacture work and, and, um, and prototyping through to final production delivery. Nice bike behind you. Just briefly, what's the story on that? Uh, yeah, so we were uh, contracted by Cervelo um, for the T5GB um, bike frame to uh, do a lot of uh, design work on the laminate design and then manufacture that component, um, which we've been using the Sahas for um, in terms of all the pattern work. That, it does look a nice bike. I, I might, might have a ride on that in a minute if you'll let me. But you talk about the Sahas machine. You were involved in the purchase of that. In, in your opinion, what were some of the reasons that, that you went down that road yeah so having as a business we hadn't acquired any um, machines to do the, this kind of job which was pattern machining and composite machining um, so we looked across the whole whole market um, there are some very obvious um, choices out there um, the market leaders um, we chose to just take an open book approach to, to it and, and, and look at everything across all budget ranges and all technologies and why do you think Sahos won just give us a couple of reasons in, in your eyes that really put it out there Sure. Okay. We we felt it gave us the most flexibility. Um, gave a, we we thought it had good support within within the UK through Asquith Butler. The architecture of the machine just gave us sort of almost zone flexibility and, and very fast installation time as well. And you've got one machine at the moment. It looks like with the expansion of the business, there'll probably be more Sahos machines. I would have thought in the future. But you you have got plans here at this site to expand even more, haven't you? Yes, we have. We currently occupy about 35,000 square feet. Over the next couple of years, we're building uh, further space in the 12.5 acre site we have behind the current facility. Uh, we'll, we'll grow into a 100,000 square foot facility. Good stuff. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Cheers.